Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Tronxy XY2 Pro 3D printer. So this is an upgrade from the previous version, the XY2, and I'm pretty excited to see what the Pro version has to offer. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. Alright guys, so this is the box that it comes in and it's quite a large size box. But I wouldn't say huge or anything. Here are the dimensions in centimeters. It's 51, 48 by 23. So, and this printer did come all the way from Hong Kong. So let's get the box open. I already cut the tape. Alright, so we see a nice foam here. And there's quite a few things here to see. So here we have the user manual. So it looks like machine parameters here. All the things that are included in this box. Where all the parts are called labeled here nicely and then we got installation which is only four steps or i guess three steps and that's a huge plus because we don't have to do much to put this thing together very nice so very good manual so we're just going to quickly pull out the contents so we got a little spool of pla filament test filament very nice i like that it's on a spool makes it a lot easier to use here looks like we have a little cap so i guess this is kind of like a gift and my first time actually seeing a cap included with the 3d printer kind of interesting we do have the tronxy logo on the front or maybe you like to call this tron xy and also in the back we have 2019 and also it says tronxy very cool and it is adjustable look at that it's actually a pretty nice cap all right pretty awesome so here we have the cable that connects between the printer and the computer for communication the us power cord looks like a baggie of tools and zip ties and clamps and a screwdriver actually a couple screwdrivers quite a bit of stuff in there and it looks like some hardware too so so we got some more good stuff over here like an extra hot end oh, very cool that they include that and another nozzle so it looks like a PTFE tubing coupler, or maybe an extra one. An end stop switch, also maybe an extra one. A micro SD card with a USB adapter. And a spatula that is semi sharpened. So that's almost everything. We do have one more item here, looks like on top. And it is the spool holder. And it's just a metal to metal spool holder. Nothing too fancy, but gets the job done and quite slim and modern looking. All right, and that's everything on the top. So let's get this foam out. All right, and here we see the upper frame of the printer, which is the gantry, all assembled looks like. And it's got quite a large chunk here on this side. And also I'm noticing here we do have some kind of leveling sensor. That's really cool. We're going to check out all the details a little bit later. All right, so we got more foam. So as you guys can see, this thing is packed quite well. So here at the very bottom, we have the base. It looks like this is the bed here. Okay, so I think this is a fiberglass bed and i think this is just the way it goes and that's the clips in the bag that we saw actually clip it to the uh, aluminum part here so so i guess it is a semi-flexible bed here that you can pull off you know and pop your prints off so this is a different way of doing it compared to making a magnetic bed you know that is vulnerable to becoming weak with lots of heat but this will not get ruined from heat all right well that's pretty cool so we should be able to just lift this thing up just like that and that appears to be everything for the box. All right, so I got the base of the printer here out and let's uh, take a closer look here. So this is the uh, profile. And uh, what I'm noticing here is it does sit higher off the ground a little bit because it has these really nice, huge rubber feet. If you guys can tell, they're quite large and kind of squishy. 
So the printer is quite thin itself. Just the rubber feet make it a little bit taller. So we do have all of our electronics mounted. On the bottom here, you can see the power supply. And then our main board is over here. It's quite a nice looking layout. So we got our main cable here tucked away. So what it looks like to me is we only have this one cable here that will connect to everything so there's not a bunch of extra cables that need to be hooked up this is looks like the only one maybe and also if you guys can see here the lcd screen the touch screen it's actually mounted here underneath i guess for shipping purposes if we go to the other side we can see here that there's a couple t-nut bolts that we need to loosen to uh, release this so i'm going to open up our bag here of tools looks like we get a little flat screwdriver a really nice phillips screwdriver a huge allen wrench and then a little pack of smaller ones looks like hardware that we're going to be needing four clips that we'll need to clamp the bed a wrench to adjust the eccentric nuts and some zip ties all right so i got the wrench that we need to loosen up the screen here so it looks like they do this from the factory to keep the screen safe and it is already connected so we don't even have to connect that so all right and so that just should just pop out and here guys you can see we have quite a nice large screen let's go ahead and pull this protector off with a logo under there very nice all right so before we continue to the assembly of the printer let's go ahead and see if we can uh, flip this thing around so i want to take this little cover off here in the back so we can see the board behind that so there's seven bolts holding it and here we see the inner workings so we do have the ac power coming in here that is fused and has a switch on and off switch and here we have the power supply and you can see guys all the cables are crimped correctly and everything looks good all right so let's take a closer look at the board here so we do have the main cable that comes in and then we have like this junction board that you know separates all the cables to where they need to go so it looks like our stepper drivers are all right here and they are synced looks like they are soldered to the board so they're not removable we do have a couple more sinks here and it looks like we do have an arm processor and it's got a sticker on top of it so and we do have a cooling fan here that blows on the board all right guys and that's what our circuit looks like here so we do have a 24 volt power supply here and while we're looking at all this we need to go ahead and check if this thing is on the correct voltage settings and the voltage switcher is right here underneath it's kind of hard to see but this one here is already switched to 110 so we're good to go so make sure you check that on the right voltage before you continue with the build and you know forget about it later so i'm just going to put this cover back on and we'll continue with the assembly all right guys so we're flipped back around let's go ahead and check our bed so the first thing i like to do is i you know check the frame make sure it's straight so this frame is seems to be very straight so this really huge allen wrench that they provided is actually for the frame bolts here we can go ahead and check and make sure they're nice and snug and these actually are not when they do snug them maybe they don't snug them hard enough or just over time they loosen so you might want to go around and snug that up real good but these are actually quite a bit tighter than the front ones were and that's it so we know that's good and by the way guys we have really large rails here there are 40 40 rails that run across here and then we got the you know metal frame back here and in the front we got a a 20 40 so it's a really really strong square that's you know not going to shift or flex so the next thing you want to do is you want to check that this rail here is nice and tight now because this rail connects on the ends this is a much better design than when they connect it in the middle here somewhere that's more vulnerable to you know shifting so but we're going to go ahead and tighten that up to what you want so what you're doing is you know checking making sure everything is nice and snug because once you get this thing all assembled you're really not going to go back and you know do all this you might as well take care of all this in the beginning so then you can just enjoy the printer all right so we checked all our bolts on the frame and they all look nice and snug now so the next part i like to do is the bed most of the times the bed is not going to be perfect and this one is not it's loose for sure and not only the bed guys but the belt here is also completely loose so we need to tighten the belt all also. and the way the bed adjusts is just on eccentric nuts and they're usually on one of the sides the other side is doesn't adjust so you're going to grab your wrench and you're going to just turn the nut until you feel it getting tight so once you feel it gets tight you can loosen it up and just keep tightening and loosening it until you get it just right the way i like to do it is i like to snug them just a little bit till there's no play at all and then i'll back it out just a little bit so the ideal way is that the roller is as loose as possible at the same time does not have any kind of 
movement or any kind of play. And when it rolls, it should feel really smooth with no jumps or any kind of jitters in the bed. If you feel any kind of like hanging points or jitters or like catching points, that means you got it probably too tight. So, so it looks like I got my hair pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten the belt. And the way we're gonna do that is here up front, we have four little Allen bolts. And all we're gonna do is just gonna loosen them. So once we loosen those, we can just pry on this bracket here just a little bit to the front and once you get that a little bit tight you don't want this tight either you just want this barely you know tight so when you're adjusting this bracket you might have to move one end you know back and forth like this and then the other you do need to line up the belt with this pulley where it's you know right in the center so when you move this thing it's perfectly aligned and same thing in the back here make sure you know everything aligns well and nothing is rubbing anywhere and when you get a nice clean motion and everything feels really good then we're done here all right, so the first thing the manual says to do is to put the touchscreen controller here on the frame somewhere over here. But we can see here our bolts are actually backwards. So we need to take the little T-nuts out and flip them around just like that. So they're pointing down. So now we can go into the channel here and we can install the screen, which goes something like this. Now, the only issue here is that you have to be careful where you clamp this down. You can't just, you know, clamp it down, you know, somewhere here up front because the bed here go travels and it has to pass the screen. So, so we need to get quite close close to it but not too close where it hits it so probably about right there turn these little bolts and the t-nut underneath should spin and lock in between the uh, channel and there we go we're close to it but not hitting it so we got a nice little gap there and it does look like you can mount this either on this side or the other side i guess if you wanted to the uh, ribbon cable underneath is long enough so now we can continue to install the upper frame assembly so for that we're going to need some hardware and it looks like these really long bolts there's four of them well there's actually five but i guess one's extra maybe and so this part is just going to sit right on top of it just like that and then there's two holes underneath there which these bolts will go through go ahead and start one so then we're just going to tighten them up just a little bit not too tight and the reason for that is because we got to put the other side on first same thing on the other side and we can go ahead and tighten these up all the way and you definitely want to snug them up good so once we tighten these we're going to go to the other side tighten those and we should be done with that part so yeah guys as you can see we're getting somewhere and that was quite simple all we had to do is put the display on and then put our main bolts in here obviously we had to adjust a few things here but that's a given with any printer so yeah i would say this is quite a simple assembly so far and the other part that makes it also very simple is the wiring is also simplified to just one plug mostly so this is the main wire plug that comes from the board and all it does it just clips right into here so there are a couple locking teeth that we need to separate here so one goes Goes up and the other one goes down and then we can plug this thing in there and as we plug it the locking teeth lock so you you know it doesn't pull out easily all right well that's pretty cool that was very simple now there is one more plug that we do need to plug and that's actually for this motor here so then the plug for that just comes out of the base here and we're going to just simply plug that into the motor right there and that's it and that's all the plugging that we have to do on this printer that's quite amazing for the next part which is basically the last part of the installation is the spool holder here and that goes on the top all right so we are at the back of the printer and the way the spool holder goes is simply this way like this so it'll mount right here you know butt it right against this bracket here and we do have t-nuts that will be holding the spool holder so we're just going to loosen those up put them in there and then tighten them back up just like that we have a spool holder nice and simple i do like the way the spool holder looks it's just a simple nice and clean design and not bulky at all and so this is how it'll look like from the front so that's pretty much the extent of the installation. Now we do still need to put our bed on here, which is very simple. We'll do that in a second. But before I do that, I would like to check all of the wheels here. Check all our belts, make sure they're running nice and true and they're nice and tight. This one's not tight, so we're going to have to listen to these two little bolts here and tighten it up. So pretty basic stuff, not too complicated. Just, you know, we'll need a little bit of attention here and there. Now you definitely want to take your time and adjust all these things because this will affect the print quality. And let me go ahead and just flip this thing around. You guys can see maybe a little better. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it and then start loosening it. And then if we can spin our little rollers quite easily and we're not loose, that means we're good. Same kind of concept as on the bed. You want to get it as loose as possible, but not where it's moving around. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with all those. So let's go ahead and do the hot end. And that eccentric nut is underneath. And the hot end is actually adjusted quite good already. Again, you want it to be nice and smooth. There's got to be no jerkiness or anything funny. If you feel any kind of bouncing around or anything, check your belt. Check that you don't have it too tight. So yeah, once you're happy with everything, 
All we got to do now is we just install the bed and that's very simple. So there is a little plastic cover that's protecting the aluminum here. So all we got to do is peel that. So then we're going to grab our top surface, which has a Biltec material on top and it's a the fine one. And that does appear like fiberglass here. So, and the cool part about this bed guys, hopefully you can see, but it's flexible. When you're done with your print, you can pop it off, you know, flex it and it should, the print should just pop right off. I'm just going to align it here with the aluminum part. And then we're going to put the four clips. All the four clips are different colors. I guess that's the way it is over there in Tronxy. They like to spice things up. That's it. That's pretty much all we got to do to install the bed here. So when you're done printing, you're just going to pop these off, take the bed out and pop the print out. So yeah, guys, it's as simple as that. We got everything put together, adjusted. And so the printer should be ready to go. So as you guys can see, this is quite a beginner friendly kind of printer where anyone could pretty much assemble this thing with ease. All right. So for the next part, we're going to take a closer look at all the details of this printer. So let's start with the spool holder. So this is what it looks like. And our spool will go obviously on here and then the filament will run down into here so here on the top we can see we have a guide here and it does have a bearing and also it is adjustable so that's a nice little feature there so that does keep the z-axis rod from wobbling too much on the top so as we come down we can see we have the extruder here so the extruder motor is right below that so the extruder assembly here is actually made out of aluminum I guess it's all metal and we got a nice spring here with good tension so as we go here, we can see we have the filament detector. And so what this does is if you run out of filament, it'll pause the machine until, you know, you load new filament in, and then you'll continue the print. Definitely a good option to have for long prints, especially. So as we go down from there, we can see this really large blue, I guess, kind of like a box. And this is, by the way, all 3D printed, this enclosure here. All that is is just a junction for this plug, and then the rest of the wires come out of there. And we can see a little sneak peek in there. So there's like another board in there that kind of separates all the wiring where it goes. So if we go back to the top here, we can see we have the PTFE tubing going to the hot end and the wiring also going that way. So let's go back down here. So here we have the lead rod and the coupler down here. And below that we have the Z axis motor. And the Z rod here actually looks a little bit different than usual. It seems more like a finer kind of tilt pattern and it's actually smaller too. If you can see my finger, it's quite small. It seems like it's more concentrated on accuracy because when you spin this thing, you can see how slow everything moves. Like I'm spinning it quite a lot and it's, you know, barely moving. So I'm guessing it's made for accuracy. So that's interesting there. So as we come down, we can see we have this 4040 channel, really nice and thick here. Here we have the on and off button. And this is where our power will plug in. Here we have the Y axis motor. And by the way, guys, all the motors are made by Tronxy themselves, looks like. And this is our Y axis switch, the end stop. So when the bed goes all the way back, it knows when to stop. Speaking about the bed, it is heated and also insulated. But you can see there the insulation. So that's a huge plus because we're going to be able to heat up the bed real quick. And also guys, the wiring is soldered straight to the bed and they just have it zip tied here to the corner of this channel here. So now this wiring here coming out is a little bit wonky. And the reason I'm saying that is because if we look at it here, if we go back, it's fine. But if we keep going forward, you can see it's kind of like just kind of dragging everywhere. You can see it's hitting this motor. Kind of pulling on it. I think they could have done a little bit of better job here. And maybe it's just this one here. Tubing here needs to be a little bit fixed. We should be all right either way. The wires are protected, so they should be just fine. So, All right, so if we keep going this way, we can see we have some vent USB connection to the computer. And beside that, there's a micro SD card slot. So this is where we put in our SD card when we bring in the files to print. And obviously we have two options. We can connect it to computer and print straight from there or use the SD card. And if we go up from there, we can see the printer information. So we got the brand, the model number, PLA ABS printing, the diameter. So here's the print size, which is 255 by 255 by 260. And that's actually a pretty good size for most printing. And we do have a 360 watt output on the power. All right. All right. So if we keep going this way, we can see that there is the display. I like how they have this plate here covering all the electronics. It looks really clean. So the little ribbon cable does come underneath here and it kind of just, you know, is underneath. So maybe this will be a good idea to strap it around something and that's how our screen looks like in the front very nice so let's go up from there and look at the hot end assembly here so we do have like a little sticker here we got hot surfaces don't touch high voltage so this is where our ptfe tubing comes in in the filament 
and that's the heat break inside we do have an axial fan here looks like a pretty nice decent duct the heat block down there with the nozzle and there's actually a silicone sock and on the other side over here we have a level sensor so this does look like some kind of optical sensor not a mechanical one and you can see there on the bottom there's nothing really there so we'll see how good this uh, leveler works here and we do have quite a large fan here for the heat break and also we have the bed which is a really nice size and it does come off which is also a plus so that's pretty much it for the overview so let's go ahead and plug it in and power it on and get the bed leveled all right i got the plug plugged in let's go ahead and hit that power button so it does sing and there's our ui that looks really nice and clean so let's check out the options right quick so we have the print button and this is where you're going to print your files so you do have to put an sd card in there we have tools we can home everything or we can move all the axes individually and this is the amount that it moves each time you click it there we have the preheat so we can preheat everything filament so this is the extruder you can move the extruder leveling the bed so it does say auto hand or cancel so we're going to cancel for now come back to that this is our fan control we can control all our fans this is to stop everything this is our offset okay so we made the printer move when i click that and that's the last thing and then we have back so let's go to system so we have info i guess that's information about where the axis is and the uh, nozzle temperature and the bed temperature it's about the printer and we can also control our beeping here looks like turn it on and off so here we have the languages we have either i guess chinese or english and then this is default i guess puts it everything back like it was and i'm guessing that's screen adjustments but we, we don't really need to touch that so yeah pretty straightforward pretty easy so let's go ahead and go to our leveling here and let's go ahead and try auto i guess let's see what happens so this thing is going to be doing something actually now that i think about it i don't think we need to go to auto first i think what we need to do is go to manual first and get it roughly right so let's go ahead and home it by clicking home and it should be homing and you guys can see how slow it moves even though it's really going automatic leveler that it does glow here looks like when it you know gets close enough to the bed so apparently that's home and it's pretty close looks like i need to move this little clamp out of the way a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to loosen the bed a little bit and get it kind of close manually so right now it's not letting me you know move the head around so i need to go back and push probably stop and that should release it okay yeah there it goes so i did release that so now i can move it around to corner to corner kind of roughly just adjust it so i'm thinking about adjusting it till the light comes on so if i tighten it down you can see the light comes off so if, as i'm loosening it it's going up the light comes on so i'm just going to leave it right there so that's probably what i'm going to do to each corner and then i can just use the offset to set it up where I want it exactly later. So I'm going to tighten this first corner here till the light goes off. Oh, there it goes. So now I'm going to go back just a little bit and it comes on. Perfect. So I think we're ready to hit the outer leveling. We'll go back to level, hit outer, and it looks like it's going to take measurements all over the bed. So let's we'll see how it does. Looks like it's homing right now. All right, there goes this first one. All right, so it's going around and reading the bed. And as it's reading, it's putting in the uh, numbers here. Pretty cool. So everything actually looks quite close enough. All the numbers are not too far off each other. This is why you want to do the manual adjustment first. All right, so it looks like it's done. That was actually quite quick. So on the screen, it says here, if the absolute value of the difference is greater than 0.8, adjust the screw and do it again. So it's basically saying if you don't have the bed already pre-adjusted pretty flat like we did earlier you know you're gonna have to do that first but as you can see all our numbers are quite accurate and very close to each other so yeah that's awesome so it looks like that part is done so we need to go back we can offset our z-axis because i think we're going to need to do that and that is taking a measurement through the middle there so as you can see guys we're way too high so we can't print like that so i'm going to change it to the finest setting here and we're going to be going down so i'm going to be clicking this going down so as i'm clicking it our nozzle should be getting closer and closer to the bed so that looks pretty good to me i'm not sure i don't want to be too close so let's start off with that that looks pretty good so i guess once you get that where you want it you're going to click the green button here set z as zero so it'll know be there next time and there we go so now it's saved the position that we have it at right now all right so i want to move up the z a little bit and then we're going to go to preheat 
let's go ahead and warm up our bed and nozzle. And so the way it works is when you click it once, it goes straight to 214 there and here 61. So we can adjust that and say 258 on the bed should be good. So you don't have to keep pushing it, just jump straight to where it needs to go pretty much. So. And I don't know if you guys can hear, but the fans are both running right now. So they're not loud or anything, but they're definitely, you know, you can hear them. We do have that fan right there that's running that it's pretty audible and then this one here also so it looks like our bed is getting hot quite quick let's see where it's at 53 on the bed and 167 170 on the nozzle so yeah it's heating up really quick actually it hasn't even been a minute yet and we're already there pretty much so i love how the bed heated up faster than the nozzle which is usually the other way around so yeah that insulation on the bed is definitely definitely a great thing to have all right guys so it looks like we need to load in some pla and then we'll grab the sd card and see what's on there all right so i got the spool out of the bag so we're just gonna put it right here in the spool holder and then we're gonna grab the other end we're gonna go into the filament detector here and as i put in the filament you can see there's a little light here that comes on indicating that there's filament there. So after the filament detector, it'll go to the extruder here, and just like that. And then we're gonna push it all the way down into the hot end. So then we're gonna click our filament icon here, push some filament through, and it should start coming out. And there it goes. So that's probably plenty. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. So let's grab our little micro SD card and insert it into the printer. So it does go upside down. So let's go back on our screen here and click on print. So we do have some kind of files, a PDF, an MP4. Looks like we do have the Tronxy slicer maybe in there too. On the very bottom looks like we have slice files. So let's see what they got for us. Okay, so we do have quite a few things we can print. We have a dinosaur, an elephant, an octopus, a rook, and a tiki, I guess that's what that is. I guess let's start with the dinosaur since that's the first one. Well, I don't know if I want to print a dinosaur in white. Maybe let's do the elephant. White elephant elephant makes more sense. So we do have a little preview of what we're about to print. That's really nice. So let's go ahead and click the play button here. It looks like the print has started. Interesting how we're going to start our first layer here. Okay, we're definitely too close to the bed. So I'm going to stop it right quick. By the way guys, I noticed that this printer does not have a Z-axis end stop switch. So I think it uses the sensor as the switch also, which is kind of interesting. Because I looked all around and I do not see any switch. So it looks like this sensor does multiple things. Alright, let's hope we got it right this time. Looks like we got a little bugger there, no problem. Okay, that looks right. Yeah, that seems to be okay. I think it can go down just a little bit more, but not a big deal. I think it'll be okay. I might adjust it on the next print, but we'll just keep it like that for this print. So I had to go a few times to get it right. Only thing is I'm realizing this is going to be quite a long print because right here it says 8 hours and 6 minutes is how much it's estimating it to be. And we've only got 3 minutes in, so it's going to take a little bit. No big deal. I'm just going to let it print. We'll see what comes out. So far everything looks really, really good. By the way guys, the auto bed leveling is working because the Z-axis keeps going up and down as it's printing. You can see it micro adjusting as it goes back and forth on the bed. So we're looking at the print from the back and it's doing the uh, second layer now I think. Looks like our cooling fan is on and everything seems to be doing good. And as it's printing, we do have an option to go in the settings here and then adjust all the parameters that we want. So we have the speed, the bed temperature, the hot end temperature, the flow rate, and the fans here. So if you want to adjust, let's say, the bed, you click on the number. So it's at 45, so let's say you want to make it 50, you just type in 5, 0, and then check mark. And now it's going to be 50. So if we go out, you see the bed is going to 50 now. So really nice and intuitive UI and quite easy to use. So we are coming to the end of the print and it's definitely taking a little longer than it thought in the beginning. So we're already nine hours and 26, 27 minutes. So, but yeah, it was quite a long print and it looks to be quite a successful one too. Well, once it's done, we're gonna take a closer look, but I do see a couple imperfections here and there. It's working on the very top part on the nose, I guess, or the trunk. All right, so it's officially done, and looks like we got nine hours and 29 minutes. So let's check this little elephant out. Well, maybe not so little. 
All right, so this will be a good time to test out the flexible bed. So we're just gonna take these little clips off and now our whole print can just come right off. So this is a super nice feature to have here. And so all we gotta do now is just flex it and the print should just pop off, which it pretty much did already. And check out our bottom, it's practically perfect. Yeah, I really, really like this style bed. All right, so let's take a closer look at this elephant. I do have to say that the bottom part of it actually turned out perfect. The layer lines and everything looks pretty much spot on. There's literally no imperfections whatsoever on the bottom portion. Now, if we go up, we can see there's, you know, white is kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a line right here. So something funky happened right there or it shifted or something and it's all the way around. And then we get higher, we get the nose area here and it looks like something definitely ha happened here, maybe under extrusion, I don't know. So it did pretty well with the retractions. There's barely any kind of little blobs there come right off easily. So overall, really nice. Just that one line here messing up the print and a little bit on the nose here. And the same part on the nose, it's right on the head also. So not a perfect print, but a very respectable one. So I'm wondering if maybe we had some kind of binding in this area or what happened. All right, so we got the elephant printed. I guess I'm gonna print a few more things that are on the micro SD card and maybe change out the filament here to different colors. And also I wanna slice a few models myself and see how those turn out. All right guys, so as you can see, we printed quite a few models and they all turned out really, really nice. So most of the models you see here were on the SD card that were provided with the printer. The only two models I sliced was the Benchy and this vase here, which was printed in spiralized mode. And all that is is just one layer, thick walls going up. So we saw the elephant already, and that turned out really good except for a few things there. And I was thinking about maybe what happened was not the printer's fault, but just a corrupted file or something. Because that's what it looks like, sort of. But in any case, let's move on here. Let's go to this red tiki looking thing. And I think that's what they call it on the SD card. So as you can see, this one turned out really, really good. Now one thing that I noticed, especially on this print, is there's a lot of vibration in the print. Like the print itself is really good, but there's just noise in the print. I don't know if you guys can make that out or not, but you can see all the little ripples. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there, but I think that's just the printer stepper motors, you know, creating the vibrations to make those little waves in the print. So I'm not sure if that could be eliminated maybe with some TL smoothers, but I'm thinking that'll probably do the trick. So that's definitely gonna be something to try. But if you look at the model overall, it is a very solid model. Like there's nothing weird. There's no layer lines. Like the layer lines blend in so well. And maybe that has something to do with that, you know, vibration noise, but it's looking really nice. So, and by the way, guys, I used Overture PLA for all these prints, except for this one, which was the test filament. And then this was a rainbow filament. This red, the black, the blue, the space silver here, and the light gray all is from Overture PLA. And that stuff just prints great. So, so just a quick plug, if you want good PLA that's affordable, Overture here got you covered. And this is the space gray and it is a great filament. So links will be in the description for the filament also. All right, so let's continue to the next print is the space gray here. And this is a rook, I guess what they call it. And this turned out reasonably well also. Now it's a little bit hard to see inside. Well, I guess practically impossible at this angle, but, but if we look at it up close, we can see there's that same printer vibration in the walls. But as far as quality and accuracy goes, this thing is spot on for sure. And our bottoms look perfect too. So on the overhangs here a little bit, there is a slight sag, but it's not bad. So maybe cooling can be improved a little bit, but that's just an upgrade. A solid print overall, so. All right, so the next thing I printed was this octopus. And this print is, you know, quite detailed print because there's a lot of separate little parts that it has to print, you know, and then they all have to kind of break loose from the bed and, and function. So there's a lot of retraction going on with this print. And as you can see, without me cleaning it at all, it's quite clean. There's a little blob here and there, but you know, with a bunch of retractions, you're gonna get that. But overall, a super solid print. And if we look at the face here, we can see how well those layers are sitting. So all these prints that we're looking at so far were sliced by Tronxy on the SD card. So 
So the last print we did from the SD card was this dinosaur. And this was printed in light gray overture PLA. And I love this color. I don't know what it is about this color. At least in person, it's a really nice neutral color. But we can see the dinosaur turned out very nice. So this is the bed side. Not bad. I think I could have had the filament a little closer to the bed. There's a little bit of gappage. And then our top is pretty much perfect. So, And I'm really liking this wall that it made here. And it's got like this nice ripple to it. I don't know if that was designed in there or was it just the printer making that one. Quite a good print. And again, this print had, you know, functioning pieces. A lot of retractions. And you can see it's very clean. Super solid print overall. So you can see the trend here is the machine is able to print quite accurately. So of course I had to slice the beloved Benchy and see what we got. And so this was sliced at 0.12 layer height and the speed was 45 millimeters per second. So, so about a two and a half hour print or so for this Benchy and try to put some more light on here. But you can see we have that same vibration all over the Benchy. But the core structure of the of the boat itself is practically perfect so this printer's got excellent accuracy and, and detail but it does have the vibration issue here so now if you do want to try to eliminate some of that vibration i think tl smoothers will do the trick and get rid of pretty much most of that we still yet have to try that and see and obviously our bottom is perfect and even our cooling looks quite good on the arches there so so overall, I'd have to say this printer can definitely print very respectable prints. And of course, for the last part, I did have to try the spiralized mode because, you know, that just kind of shows how a printer can put down layers. And so I printed this vase here and it is in a rainbow filament. We can see we got two colors out of it since it's kind of a short print. But we got this nice blue to this lighter aqua blue, teal, whatever you call that color. But it's beautiful. And you can really see the patterns in the vase here of how the print lays down so again there's a lot of salmon skin effect from the vibration i guess of the uh, stepper motors but other than that the bonding is perfect now i was a little hasty of taking this thing off and broke the bottom unfortunately i forgot how fragile you know a single layer is so yeah but overall you can see how amazing this print turned out so yeah, and that's all of our prints. And I do have to say, they all turned out great. So one of my favorite parts about the printer is definitely the removable bed here that you can pull out, flex it to pop the prints off. That makes printing much more enjoyable and much more simpler. And you would only know that if you, you know, had the hard beds that you had to scrape your prints off. So, so that part is awesome. Also, I love the UI here. It's got a really nice large touch screen and the menus are really easy to go through and figure out and just a breeze to use. And not to mention all the modern features that this printer has like filament detection. So if you run out of filament, it'll pause until you put new filament in. Power loss resume. So if you, you know, lose power, you you can resume the print and continue where you left off. You can change your filament midway. You know, all the necessary things that you need to enjoy printing. So overall, the Tronxy XY2 Pro definitely feels solid. And it's one of those printers that you know that you can just throw prints at it constantly and it'll just, you know, produce. So yeah, I really think this is a great printer for the value. Would be also a great machine for beginners because there's not much assembly required and it's really easy to get started. So, and they do include the Tronxy slicer on the card, which I didn't get a chance to use. But if you're familiar with a slicer kind of like Cura, you know, if this machine accepts it, you just use what you know. So, and that's another great thing is it'll accept STL files from different slicers all right guys well hopefully you enjoyed this video of the xy2 pro if you did then hit that like button and if you want to pick up a printer like this for yourself i'm going to have some links in the description and also i'm going to have some links for this overture pla that i used if you want to grab some of that and it is all from amazon so if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more i do a lot of 3d printing stuff and there's a lot more to come so if you're not subscribed then hit that subscribe button to see more and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace